Hey everybody, so this uh, video has been a little overdue. This is going to be the second part of upgrading your Ender 3 to an SKR 1.3 board. So let's get to it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is going to go to the Marlin website and download Marlin. We're going to download the latest release, which is 2.0.1. Download the zip file, unpack it, and then we'll start up Visual Studio Code. I'm going to go over to extensions and we're going to open and search for platform io this is the main platform uh, development program that we're going to use to configure marlin we're going to go to install the platform and once it's installed we will reboot and come back to a new screen and once we're here we're going to open project and navigate to wherever the project happens to be on the computer um, and what you're looking for is this platform.ini, platformio.ini file. Open Marlin when you see that in the folder, and it'll actually uh, bring up a whole projects folder. You can close the welcome screen on the editor, no big deal. Uh, so we're going to go down to the Marlin uh, folder, and it's going to show you configuration H and configuration ADV.H. We're going to start with configuration H. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that you can change. Uh, we're going to just go through the basics, really. So we're going to scroll down until you find uh, Define Show Boot Screen. Make sure that's uncommented. Otherwise, you won't have a boot screen. Uh, what you want to do is also make sure Define Serial Port is uncommented as well. And we're going to change that in a minute. Um, and we're also going to uncomment define serial port 2. It's needed for this board and this touch screen. So we're going to change the first one from 0. We're going to change that to negative 1. And we're going to also change number 2 to 0. I'm not sure exactly why, but this is what it works as. Then we're going to go down to define baud rate. This is the communication rate. Usually it's 1150 to 100. So now that we have that, we're good to go down to the next step which is motherboard. Its default is board ramps 14 EFB. So we're going to go over here to core boards.h. We're going to scroll down to find our SKR uh, 1.3 board. So there's a whole bunch that you can pick from, but the main thing that we want to look for is the SKR board, which is going to be board, big tree tech. Uh, it's kind of way down here. There we go. Board Big Tree SKR version 1.3 or 1 underscore 3 for this purpose. So we're going to go ahead and copy that. We're going to go back to configuration.h. Close all this other stuff up. Configuration.h. We're back in it. And we're going to go down to the boards and we're going to paste right over that. Oop, moved it. Ah, there we go. There we go. Back to boards. Uh, motherboard is properly defined now. Sweet. Now we're going to go down to the next section. Uh, which is define custom machine name. You don't have to. I like to just uh, so it displays the machine name on startup. And we're just going to put in Ender 3. No big deal. Also, we're going to go down uh, to filament diameter. Want to change the filament diameter to 1.75. Then we're going to go ahead and scroll down some more until we hit our next section to edit. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different other stuff you can change in here. Uh, if you want to change power supplies, like if you've got a mean well or something, you can change that. Uh, but we want to look at thermal settings. Thermal settings is super important. Uh, there's all kinds of thermistors that you can choose from. Uh, the first one is going to be temp sensor 0, which is your hot end. It's going to be 1. Change the bed to 1 as well. Um, here's all kinds of different uh, max temperature settings. Uh, you might want to change those. I leave it default. It's no big deal. PID settings, you'll run a PID tune later, nothing to worry about there. Uh, temperature controls, same thing. Uh, thermal runaway protection, make sure all three of these are uncommented here. And then we're going to go down to our next section. Z probe in stop inverting, change that to true. And the reason we want that is because we're using a BL touch. Uncomment uh, defining the drivers, we're going to uncomment the X and comment the Y, the Z, and the E0 driver type. And we're going to change those to TMC2208s. So we'll just go ahead and copy this. 
we'll go over here and paste it on each one of the ones that we have uncommented and that tells it which driver type it's using for um, later use. So now that that's done, <clears throat> we can go down and we can check for our next thing, which is default axe per stepper unit. So we want to change right here uh, to 493. We're going to go down to feed rate, and we're going to up that just on the X and the Y to 600. And we're going to change the Z, or not the Z, uh, the acceleration down to 500. Uh, you can play around with this if you really wanted to. This is just default where it seems to work best for these stepper motors. Uh, and then 5,000. Then we're going to go down uh, default acceleration, set it to our default uh, max, just a little over. 600, 600, and 600. And it gives it nice and stable. And then we'll go down and we're going to look at Z probe options. Uh, make sure Z min probe uses Z min in stop is uncommented. Should be by default, but you never know. Uh, and then we're going to look for the probe types. Uh, there's all kinds of different probe types down here, but we're looking for BL touch. So we're going to uncomment to find BL touch. That's going to tell it that we have a BL touch installed. And then we're going to go down to the BL touch settings. This is where it's going to be uh, set in relation to your nozzle. Mine specifically for this mount uh, was negative 44 and uh, negative 14. So to the left and to the front by 44 and 14 millimeters. I'm setting my Z in here, uh, but you can also set it through command line later. And we'll get to that later. One of the other things is make sure your min probe edge is there. Um, and then change your XY probing speed. I put it up to 10,000. And then we're going to scroll down to clearance deploy probe. It gives it 5 millimeter clearance to extend and retract. And scroll down even further. Uh, we're going to change the inverting of the X direction to true for these stepper drivers. That's just stepper direction. We're also going to change the E0 uh, direction to true as well for our extruder motor. We're going to set the bed size to 235, 235, and then the Z max position to 250. That's the Creality Ender 3 size. Then we're going to go down and we're going to check, uh, make sure all the software end stops are still defined, which is great. We're going to go down to filament runout sensor. We're going to define filament runout sensor. So, and we're going to change <clears throat> uh, run, run out inverting could be false or true. You're going to have to test this later through uh, command line just to see which uh, state it is. So we're good there. Go down to bed leveling. Uh, we're going to uncomment define auto bed leveling bilinear. Most common and the best use case for a BL touch. Uh, then we can go down. We're going to look for. Um, going to look for. Uh, grid max points, uh, so we're going to probe 5 by 5 grid, pretty easy to do. And then we're going to go down a little bit more. Uh, we're going to skip past all this unified bed leveling stuff, and uh, we're going to go down to find Z-safe homing. That's what we're looking for. Uh, Z-safe homing down here is just to make it so that it has uh, the ability to touch the bed. We're going to change the homing feed rate from 4 to 8, speed it up a little bit. And that will get us to home in the middle of the bed. We're going to go down and define EEPROM settings. That lets us do the commands through Prodder Face. And you can change your preheat commands down here. I changed mine to 210 and 70 for PLA. I don't really print ABS, so I just leave that alone. We're going to define nozzle park feature. Uh, not right now, we'll do that in a minute, and I'll show you why. Uh, so that pretty much is going to cover um, a lot of this stuff down here. The only thing we have left is uh, SD card support. So we're going to look for define SD card support and uncomment that so we can actually print from SD card. And then we're going to look for uh, define speaker. You don't have to, uh, but the board comes with it. It's nice to have. We're going to look for our touchscreen display. So we're going to scroll past um, all this here which is the defaults and the Ultimakers and the Creality ones. Uh, we're going to look for uh, generic RepRap control. 
Smart controller, full graphic smart controller. Here we go. So we're going to uncomment that, and that is our touch screen. And we're going to go over to configuration ADV.h. So this is configuration advanced. Uh, we're going to scroll past the thermal settings. Nothing we really need to change in here. And uh, nothing for the chamber because we don't have a heated chamber. If you needed to change things uh, for thermal runaway, you could change them in here. Uh, we're going to change the E0, which is the extruder fan pin, to P2 underscore O4. And that'll be our hot or our, um, heat break fan. You can find that by going through down to pins for the OPC 1768. Uh, you can look at the SKR 1.3 or the BTT SKR H pins and you can see that the, uh, the pin that we're using corresponds on the uh, motherboard to our hot end fan pin so if it gets over 50 degrees on the hot end it automatically kicks on. So back in configuration ADV.h we're going to go down to the stepper driver areas. Uh, we don't need to set up zoot dual stepper drivers or anything so we're just going to skip all the way down here to the BL touch um, area. There's a whole lot of different things you're going to look at. Uh, we want the BL touch delay and that just gives it a little bit of extra signal time to um, notice that trigger. And then we can go down here to define BL touch set 5 volt mode. Uh, very useful for this BL touch. Going to define baby stepping and that's going to help us set our Z offset, tune it in later. Uh, turn the multiplier up to 10 or you'll be sitting there cranking that wheel all day. Advanced pause feature. So this is our filament runout. Uh, we wanted to find that and we're going to need the nozzle park feature. So this is when we switch back to configuration.h and uncomment to find nozzle park feature. It's required for the filament runout detection. You can control F this and uh, do nozzle underscore park and it'll show it as well. So once you've uncommented that, you can go back to your configuration adv.h. You can change your filament uh, unload length. I changed it to 190. So that just kind of gets it all out of the bottom tube. Then we go down to the drivers. Uh, we don't need 20, TMC26. We need TMC2208. So we go down to if has trinamic. And we're going to set the current to 600 for the X. We're going to set it to 600 for the Y. 600 for the Z and finally for the E750 and this is just for those particular uh, stepper motors. We want to comment out to find stealth chop E so we don't lose any steps on our extruder which is important and then um, basically after that we can just go down to the platform IO button here uh, from the top, you want to scroll down to you find Environment OPC 1768 and click Build. And it'll pop up. Um, I already previously built something, so this is what you're going to see. It's going to scroll, do its thing, and should show Succeeded. And you should be good to go there. It means it all built successfully. And now we're going to go over to Pronterface. Plug in our uh, USB cable to the main board, should pop up with a new volume. And just to make sure that we actually can read to it, we're going to pick the COM port, uh, make sure the baud rate's right, hit connect, should say printer's now online. That means we are able to actually access the board and upload to the board, which is awesome. So you can disconnect, make sure you don't have any connection issues, switch back over to VS Code and hit upload and it should go through a similar terminal command and when it's done it should show succeeded you can scroll up and look to make sure that there is actual success here all right so back in printer face we're going to connect back to the printer uh, we're going to go ahead and enter an m503 command this is going to show you all your default settings uh, we're going to change the uh, z compensation fade height later um, so we can uh, not compensate for the skewed bed at a certain height. And then we're going to also show you how to uh, set the Z offset for the probe through this command as well. 
and uh, we're also going to take a look at the end stop for the filament runout sensor. So we're going to enter M119. Um, if you have no uh, filament in there, it should say open. And put a piece of filament in, uh, run the M119 again, and it should show triggered. If it doesn't, uh, just go back to the um, firmware and switch um, that inverting to true or false. So I've already run a bunch of commands in here, but I'm going to show you how we did this again. Uh, really, I'm just going to enter a G1, which is a movement command, X10. Uh, Make sure that my X carriage moves the proper direction, which would be to the right. And then we're going to try the same thing with the Y direction. Uh, should move forward and try it one more time. Um, that we would just make sure everything is going right. If it is, hit G28. Everything should home. Um, you can tap a little uh, BL touch to make sure that it triggers properly and doesn't run into the end stop or the into the bed. So then we're going to change it uh, to G1Z0. That's going to put Z at what it thinks is zero. After it's done doing its homing, we're going to do M211S0 to turn off the end stops, which is needed for setting the uh, Z probe offset. And so what you want to do is you want to put G1, Z, uh, negative, and then pick a small value like 0.5. And basically what you're doing is you're trying to get that piece of uh, paper between the nozzle and the bed uh, with a little bit of drag to it. And you just keep going a little bit further negative each time until it starts to get that little resistance. And then you know where your offset should be. So 1.5. 0.5 whatever you feel it is uh, mine again was uh, 2.8 negative 2.8 so once you find your offset um, put G1 back to 0 uh, Z0 and then put in uh, M851 and then Z and then your negative number like I said mine was 2.8 and then you want to turn your uh, software in stops back on uh, with M211S1 and then finally save it all to the firmware with M500 and then you can M503 and see what comes up and you can say oh alright well here's my new Z um, offset so it should save it <clears throat> so now we're going to look at the um, filament um, or the Z compensation fade height so after a certain height there's no need for it to compensate for a skewed bed so what we're going to do is put that at like one millimeter. So we're going to go M420, um, S1, Z1.0. So that's one millimeter up. It's going to stop compensating for a skewed bed, which is fine. So I do uh, S1 first, and then we go to S0. Throw that in there. Uh, run that. And so you can see it says echo fade height 1.0. And then go back, run the S1 command in that. And then we will M500 to uh, save all these changes. <clears throat> and should be no problem. So make sure it says it's stored. M503 to double check it. And now you can see M420S0Z1. So you should be good there. Finally, uh, run G29 and let it go through its auto bed leveling. And when it's done, you'll see it spit out all, a whole bunch of numbers and you'll be like, all right, no big deal. All right, so that's how you upgrade your Ender 3 to an SKR 1.3 board and how you update the firmware with all different settings and changes. So if you like this video, stay tuned, more coming out, and thank you for watching. Catch you later.